Hello everybody, welcome back to Renderbots, I'm James and today we're going to be looking at building a flag for your scene. This kind of comes from a question somebody asked me about how do I import a picture, which I think was Paul who sent me an email to say how do I import a picture into uh, Cinema 4D. So I thought well, as opposed to uh, bringing in just a standard picture, we'll do something with it. So we're going to create a flag, okay? Um, it's going to look something a little bit like this. Okay. Pretty good. And there's my little render bot next to it as well. So we're going to go ahead and build that right now. So let's start off with um, our Cinema 4D. Here we go. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to grab hold and make a tent pole or a, a pole for this um, flag to go to. So I'm going to go up to my um, primitive button here and click on cylinder. And straight away it's brought us a lovely um, cylinder and I'll grab hold of this area here, click, drag up like so. If I move my, my uh, little camera icon there you can see I can look over the top of it. Drag this section in and make it very tent polish. Um, for a bit of fun we can actually also drop on a little sphere here. Move this to the top, we'll grab a little, little green arrow there, drag the top come over here and just scale that down like so there we go let's do that perfect there we go that's pretty simple right so that's that there's the pole done as easy as that and you see we've got our sphere here and our cylinder there that's the start of our pole so next we want to build the actual flag this is done again through using our primitive i'm going to go through a plane here now when you get a plane you'll see it actually just drops here like so so you see orientation here, we can go to X, you know, uh, X plus Y and do all this kind of stuff to get it somewhere near. And yeah, that's pretty cool. Let's leave it to there. So we're going to go to the plus Y on there. Now what we do is we're going to, um, let's go to our little tool here and we're going to stretch them out. So obviously it comes up as a little square. We're going to make it very flag shape-ish. Let's click on our little movement tool there. Go to the green area. Drag a little red arrow here. Looking pretty good. There we go. Now what I'm looking for here is it for it to actually join the actual tent pole. So if I sort of click on the cylinder here, there we go, go to the plane. I'm looking so it actually sort of mixes slightly with the flagpole there. So I'm going to bring it in and there we go. Now at this point I'm going to go to the word display and I go to Gurid shading with lines. And this means I can see all of the um this means I can see all of the polygons inside of here. Now what I need to do is make this editable. Um, now before I do that, what I'm going to actually do is hide this tent pole. Okay. Now the way I'm going to do that is, is come over to here. And what I've got to see this little sort of green tick here. We'll give it a click. Boom, it's gone. It's cool, right? Click on it once, twice, off it goes. Now the reason for that is I'm going to do some funky stuff down here to pin this um, plane against that cylinder. So I've just hidden it just by pressing that to make it a lot simpler. Now what we'll do is we're going to go to the edit tag, uh, this little um, button here, this is going to make it editable. Click on that, and that's really important for us to do that. And then we're going to go and head, a, uh, head over and put a simulation tag onto our plane here. So the way we're going to do that is we've got a plane highlighted here. We're going to go to our tags and we want something called simulation. And very simply there, we're going to move over down to the word cloth tag there. Give it a click. There we go. Now, what we need to do is make sure that we've turned it into a piece of cloth now. Now, if I press play, what's going to happen is it's going to fall apart away from the scene. And what I need to do is pin the side of this so it's kind of hooked on to that cylinder that we can't see like magic. So to do that, what we do, we're going to go over to our little uh, points tool here, give that a click, and suddenly we can see all of the little points. If I hover my cursor over there, there they all are. Cool, right, so what I'm going to do is go to my selection tool here, live selection. I've got my points tool highlighted, and I'm going to click and drag down there like so. So what I've done is I've highlighted all those points. Now, go over to my plane. Go over to the clock tag, there's a cloth tag, and down here we've got the word forces and dresser. And what I'm going to do is hit the dresser tab, and very simply down where it's got the word fixed points here, we're going to go to the word set. 
boosh. And straight away, all of those now turn from orange to pink. Okay. Now, from here, what we need to do is we can turn back on our cylinder. There we go. And believe it or not, if I press play now, way, look at that. There's our flag just falling away there. So there's a few things we need to do to get this somewhere up to scratch. That was pretty simple, wasn't it? Okay, so what we do is press pause, uh, press rewind, and we see we've got 90 frames right here, right now. So let's click on this and make that around, I don't know, 400. Let's go to 400 there. Okay. And that's going to give us a lot of um, time for the flag to sort of flutter in the wind. Okay, play. And then we'll pause and press rewind. So we're back to the start thing. So what we need to do is give this some force. In other words, give it some wind to push it across and make it look quite real. So I've got my, uh, my cloth tag highlighted again here. Go to the word forces here. And we're looking at all this stuff down here. There's loads. And please do feel free to have a play inside here. There's loads for you to have a go with. Uh, so wind direction. In this case, on the on the is it the X we've got there, we can change that to eight centimeters. On the Y, we can change this to six point three. Now again, I've just done lots of trial and error with this, and this is what I've come up with, which is kind of best for this um, plane. So do feel free to again try your own. They're going to give some good results. Uh, Z one centimeter is going to be that, and this is kind of the main bit here, the wind strength. How much kind of is it a windy day? Well. We're going to give it five whole wind strength. And if I press play now, hopefully we're going to get a nice, there you go, look at that, just performing beautifully. So now we need something to put on our flag. And again, this goes back to Paul's question, you know, how do we get an image into Cinema 4D? So the way we do that is we're going to go over to the word, um, well, we can go create a new material, but I, got, I like to give you guys a little shortcut. And that's just by double clicking anywhere inside of this area here. So double click this, we'll double click that. Go to color, which is highlighted there. Go to the word texture, follow that all the way through to the end there. Click on there. And on here, I've got all these amazing flags. Look at these flags, it's got some good stuff on here. And these are kind of all the countries which I'm popular in at the moment. So uh, thanks guys for um, for subscribing and telling all your friends about me. So these are the flags of the countries which uh, Renderbots YouTube is really popular in at the moment. So let's go with um, let's go with my own here. And we can press um, open. It says, do I want to copy that to the path? I'm going to say no. I'm going to turn off spectacular. I don't really want that. Specular, I don't want that. Uh, click on the material. And very simply grab hold of the flag and then boosh, drop it on like so. And there it is. It's all there. So when I press play now, yes, look at that. Absolutely fabulous. So again, guys, just to make you familiar how we're going to render that out, because sometimes it's important to get that rendered out. All we can do is go to our render settings up here, give that a click, and it's normally set to this. This is kind of default setting here. So what I'd like to do is change it from this to film, change it to, um, here we go, 720, 25 frames per second. It says here, range, uh, frame range, change it to all frames, okay. And lastly, we go to save, and it's going to ask me where I want to save this. So I follow all this way to the end, hit the three dots, click on there, We'll save it to as called uh, flag uh, flag GB. We'll save it to desktop. That's fine. And here's really important now is the format. We follow the format all the way through, and we want to change this really all the way down to quick time movie. This is going to be a really cool little film. Quick time movie. And one last thing. Go to the word options. It's got the word animation here. We want to just change that to H.264. And this produces from us a really nice um, small movie file as well. Press OK. Okay, that's all my settings done, ready to render. Um, and as you see, it's kind of zoomed in on my image there. Now, what I'm gonna do is gonna bring my cursor back slightly there, so you can see that flag fluttering away. Looks really good, doesn't it? It's really, really effective. And you know, it's really simple to change, you know, and, and bring in another flag, just create new material and drop it straight on. Really, really simple. So from here, we can actually just, um, you know, if I press render, yeah, it looks pretty good, right? We can add some colors to this if you wanted to as well. It, it's had kind of, um, Give it a bit more world dimension inside of this. Uh, what we do is add a, a physical sky. And what it does is it gives some blue and some brown down here. So if I hit render now, there you go. It looks a lot better and gives the flag some sort of, um, yeah, it gives it some nice shadowing and stuff going on inside. It's a nice shadow inside there. Looks really good. Um, if you wanted to kind of get, 
you know, a bit more cloth like you see, you've got some hard edges inside there. What we could have done is actually gone and before we made the plane, is add a few more polygons to that plane. Um, what I mean very quickly, we're going to leave that for now. We'll go far new. If I go to the um, primitive here, go to plane. When we first started, I think we go Z or something like that. That's cool. When we went to the Z here, uh, went to display and go with lines there. See how many sort of um, polygons we have inside of here. What we can do before we make it editable by pressing C or clicking on here, what we do is we look over this area here. This is a width segments 20. So if we add more of those in there and more of those there, you see how many more uh, sort of polygons we're getting kind of out of that. This means when we make it editable, suddenly it's got a lot more um, movement within inside the flag. Um, of course, it will slow down your rendering time because obviously it's, it's having to calculate where all of these little squares are going to be in, in service time. So there you go. There's your um, there's our flag waving away. And again, obviously, feel free to change the flag to anything you want. Um, send me your work. I want to see it. Yeah, I want to see what you've been up to, guys. It'd be great to see you. Uh, once again, thank you very much for subscribing. We've got to um, quite a few subscribers now. Uh, please do email me um, or follow me on Twitter, which is um, at render underscore bots. It's down there. And uh, thanks, guys. And I'll see you again soon. Take care. Happy rendering. Bye-bye.